There's quite a bit of noise today about ChatGPT and other open source instruction fine-tuned models, as they have shown that they can actually assist humans on complex tasks and even surpass humans on certain occasions. Everyone is flocking around these models to understand them and even improve them. When you hear news about these models, the first thing you typically try to do is download one of these models and play around with them, right? But there's one big problem. These models are huge. They're billion parameter models. Even the smallest one, like Dolly, has 6 billion parameters. It would take about 22 gigabytes just to fit those parameters on a device. Everyone can't afford ChatGPT Plus or have high-end GPUs like A100s just lying around for us to play with them, right? So here's an interesting challenge. Can we use modest resources to load one of these billion scale models? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly that. I'm going to use a fairly low-end GPU laptop, which has an RTX 3050 4GB GPU, and show you how to load Llama, the 7 billion version, into that computer. Sounds pretty impossible, right? Well, as you will see in this tutorial, no, it's actually not. In fact, you will see that this model can produce about half a token every second, or one token every two seconds, which is quite impressive given it's a low-end GPU laptop, and this is a billion-scale model we are talking about. Cool, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do here is run the command NVIDIA SMI. This will give you a bunch of information about the GPU we have in the computer. You can see, for example, the CUDA version, the driver version, the GPU model, the memory it has, and even the GPU utilization. You can see on this right side, I have a continuous loop of NVIDIA SMI running. So you can actually see in real time what's the GPU utilization and what's the memory consumption. Something to note here is that I'm actually running this tutorial in a Conda environment. And my Conda environment is in a Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. You can access the WSL through the PowerShell using the bash command. Let's take a quick look at what are the main libraries we'll be using here. First, we're going to be using the Transformers library to load models and run predictions through them. Second, we're going to use a library by Hugging Face called Accelerate. I must say, I'm actually blown away by this library. It's amazing what you can achieve with that. You can do things like, if you have multiple GPUs, for example, you can perform model parallelism with only a few lines of code. And if you want more advanced techniques like manually place certain layers on certain devices, you can do that as well. It's pretty amazing and I would recommend just checking out that library. We'll be using this particular repository on Hugging Face as our Llama 7 billion version. Okay, there's one important concept you need to keep in mind throughout this tutorial. That's the speed memory trade-off. If you want more speed, you will have to have more memory in your computer. And if you don't have more memory, then you would have to sacrifice speed in order for something to work. We are running our model on a low memory environment, which means our model will be slow. Specifically, I have about 6 GB RAM to spare and a 4 GB GPU, which is 10 GB in total. If you think about full precision, that is floating point 32 bit, the model will require about 25 gigabytes to load just the weights. Obviously, the math doesn't add up, right? So what are we going to do here? We're first going to use the Accelerate library to learn a good device mapping that gets our job done. But there's a bit of a chicken and egg problem here. I need to load the model in order to learn a device mapping. However, I can't load the model because I don't have enough memory to load the model naively. So what do we do? Again, Accelerate can help you there. It can create an empty version of your model. 
What does that even mean? Well, in a later version of PyTorch, they introduced this concept of meta devices. When you load a tensor into a meta device, it only needs the shape of that particular tensor. It doesn't need the data. Therefore, you can have any arbitrary size model on a meta device. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We're going to load an empty version of our model so that we can learn a device mapping to get started. You can see that here, when we execute this piece of code, the memory consumption of the RAM or the GPU doesn't increase. You can do that with the init empty weights context manager. When you load the model like this, it knows the shapes of all the weights in the model. And here you can see that I've specified the maximum memory allowed for my GPU and for my CPU. Now, Accelerate can do the number crunching and find the best device map that works for us. Pay attention to how I've specified the maximum memory for each device. I haven't used the full capacity of them. This is important because you will need to store inputs and outputs as where the corresponding weights are in. So you need to keep that in mind. For example, I have a 4 GB GPU. However, I've set the maximum memory to only 3 GB. Here, you can see the device map that Accelerator came up with. Obviously, we can't load the full model to our GPU. So Accelerator understands that and recognizes that and uses both the GPU and the CPU. But there's another problem. Even with both CPU and GPU, there's still not enough room then Accelerator can do even a more clever thing. That is, it can spill the remaining onto the disk and store them as memory mapped files. Memory mapped files can be easily loaded and offloaded with speed. Next, what's gonna happen is whenever we need these weights, which are stored in the disk, they will be loaded onto the CPU, do the num crunching and then offload them to free up the resource. The most awesome thing about this is that the accelerator library can take care of all of this for you. When I created the device map, I didn't take the, I didn't copy and paste the device map produced by the accelerator. In fact, I actually played around with it to find the optimal one that works for me. If you play around with this, you might experience kernel crashes from time to time, as this is not an exact science. We'll first load the tokenizer for this model. We're going to be using a few optimizations here. There's two main libraries that can facilitate this. The accelerator library, which we've already talked about, and bits and bytes library. This is again a hugging face library. The first optimization we're going to be talking about is 8-bit quantization technique. The idea here is to store the weights in int 8 precision and floating point 16 precision. This drastically reduces the model size. You can read the paper, which is linked in the description, if you want more details. The approach here is to perform the matrix multiplication in int 8 and floating point 16. Why not use int 8 for the full operation though? Wouldn't that reduce the memory requirement even further? Yes, but it leads to other problems. In transformer blocks, there are these weights called outliers. If you quantize these outliers, it leads to a drastic performance degradation. So you need to be careful which weights are converted to intake and which ones are kept in half precision, that is floating point 16. The beauty of the bits and bytes library is that, again, it takes care of all of these. It will decide which weights are kept in intake and which ones are kept in floating point 16. The next problem is even with this optimization, right? We still can't load the full model to the GPU and the CPU doesn't support floating point 16 operations. What do we do now? Again, you have a feature to take care of this. You can set this particular argument to true and it will only quantize the weights that are on the GPU with this particular technique. The ones that are on the CPU or on the disk will be kept in full precision. Let's see the memory footprint after these optimizations. Amazing, right? We had a 25 gigabyte model now just sitting at 
10 gigabytes. That's pretty amazing. And the really cool thing about this approach is, as the paper suggests, there's only very minor performance degradations. But it's also important for you to be careful that this is not introducing any performance degradations. So don't take everything in the paper for granted. Always do checks on your end as well. After this, you can pretty much use this model as any other model on Hugging Face. We just tokenize the input and pass it to the model and wait for the predictions. Remember that this will be slower than running this model on just a GPU. After a while, you will see that this model produces about one token every two seconds. The first run will be a bit slower than the consecutive runs. So just leave the first run as a warm-up exercise and focus on the subsequent ones. Another alternative you can try is running this model on Google Colab. On Google Colab, you actually have a bigger GPU and you can get this for free. It has a Tesla T4, which has about 16 gigabytes. And the quantized version of this model can be fit fully on that GPU. When I ran this exercise, I got about 4.5 tokens per second. That's about a nine times speed up than the one I ran on my laptop. But nevertheless, it is still pretty impressive that I was able to run this huge model on a low-end GPU laptop. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoy these kind of cool new technologies and want to learn more about machine learning, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Deep Learning Hero, and I will see you soon with a new video.